I currently work in a startup called Cred Solutions and we are a tech startup that focuses on learning and development in large organizations. And there are some big differences between working in a large organizational corporation and working in a startup. Firstly, when you're in a small startup, you're very much in each other's pockets all the time. There's very much that sense of you can't escape each other, which is a good thing because you develop this sense of esprit de corps and communion and working on something together. But in some ways it can be bad if you have conflict and you have misalignment in values and attributes. So choose wisely. In an organization you can escape, in a startup you can't. Teams are pretty complex things. They're human beings are complex and when you put them together there's so many things that can go right and there's so many things that can go wrong. So it's really important that when you're looking for the right people in your team that you understand yourself really, really well in order to know how you'll be compatible with other people. I've found that with a lot of other people that have been in startups and have not worked out, one of the big things that they have a problem with is finding people that have value alignment. So for example, if you're really interested in building a long-term sustainable business that really makes a difference, you don't want to be with someone who is just trying to get rich quick, who is in this because they think they can make a few dollars in a couple of years, sell the business and make a bit of money. Because there are two totally different approaches that require different types of working, different types of thinking. Same, if you're looking to find someone that might be a co-founder or join your team, make sure they have alignment on work-life balance. If you think to build your business, you're gonna be able to work 100 hours a week and sacrifice everything else, not go to the movies, not do anything fun, stay in on weekend and just code or work on your business. Don't look for someone that thinks that they can do it 40 hours a week and still do the same thing because six months down the track, 12 months down the track, you're gonna find you're clashing all the time because there's not that perceived fairness between the two of you or the three of you. Make sure you have the same ethical approaches. Some people are more willing to cut corners than you might be and you're gonna come into a lot of conflict if you're with somebody that has that approach. It's also important to find people who really get why you're doing what you're trying to do. So having a shared purpose. If you're trying to really create value for a certain type of person or a certain group in society and you want to really make a difference, make sure other people get that as well. The more people you have, the more relationships you have to manage. So it's really important that you choose the people carefully and you don't have more people than you need to have. So there's some research that's been conducted that shows that seven plus or minus two is the ideal number for a team. That might not be the same for your startup, but the idea is that once you start having a lot of people in a team, you start to share responsibility that becomes what's called social loafing. So people don't take ownership and they tend to defer to other people. You wanna keep your team just to the people that you actually need and not inflate that to have all these other people that aren't uh, ultimately adding value. Make sure that the people in your team really know how to work hard and actually do things. Talking strategically is very interesting to everyone. It's really fun to go and have a three hour lunch and talk about how you're gonna be the biggest company in the world and how you're gonna raise all this money and what you're gonna do when you sell and how you're gonna go you know, sit on a beach in Hawaii after it's all done. And that is really fun, but you need to find people that actually can step by step tactically map out what they're going to do and what they're gonna be responsible for in creating value for your business. So if somebody is talking too high level, sometimes it can be a very red flag that they don't know or are willing to put in the actual day-to-day -day work that's required. You also want to look at their track record. So have they had a history of talking a lot and not doing? What kind of work have they done before? Um, have they been promoted? What projects have they seen to conclusion and how have those projects been received? Sometimes you might even want to do a bit of a trial basis working with someone, give them a little mini project to work on uh, in conjunction with your company and see are they a good fit before you start offering them things like equity and making them more involved in your organization.